One thing that I think most of us have encountered, whether we've recognized it or not, is that theists are only too happy to tell us everything there is to know about their gods. God is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. God loves you. God wants you to believe in him, so you'll go to heaven, otherwise you'll burn forever in fiery perdition. But the one thing that nobody ever explains is how they actually came by any of this knowledge. How did they determine the characteristics of a deity that they're unable to objectively demonstrate in the first place? Of course, the first answer you're likely to hear is, I have faith. Well, good for you. That proves nothing. Faith is a measure of belief, not of fact. There is no way utilizing faith to objectively demonstrate that the object of your faith is actually real, and that's a problem, especially when you're trying to debate the subject in public. Ultimately, that's no better than saying, I'm right because I say so. It's just irrational. Besides, these people really don't accept faith as evidence anyhow. They accept their own faith, but not the faith of others, especially if the faith of others contradicts what they believe. They're only too happy to tell you about their faith in their God. But the second someone else tells them about their faith in a different God, it all becomes entirely irrelevant, even if both parties believe equally as strongly. Faith isn't a means of discovering fact or identifying truth. It's just a way of pretending that your strongly held beliefs actually mean anything. And I'm sorry, but they just don't. Then you'll get people who proclaim that some religious book somewhere tells them about their gods. But that just moves everything back a step. How did the people who wrote the book know any of the things that they claimed about their gods? How do you know that they actually knew it? How did you actually test their claims to prove that they are in congruence with objective reality? The Harry Potter books claim that there's an evil wizard named Voldemort. Is there? Nearly a hundred years of Superman comics tell us that there's a flying alien from Krypton that protects the planet. Is there? And longevity doesn't matter. Just because the Bible's been around for 2,000 years doesn't make it automatically reliable. There are older books of mythology out there that nobody takes seriously. In another 2,000 years, will the works of J.K. Rowling or the creation of Siegel and Schuster be any more true just because they're old? Ideas are true when and only when they're actually true. How old it is, how respected it is, how many people believe it, all of these are logical fallacies that have nothing at all to do with objective truth. How it makes you feel doesn't really matter to anyone but you. It certainly doesn't impart any truth value to your faith. So, why don't the religious recognize this kind of fallacious thinking? Because they don't care. It doesn't matter to them. Their beliefs make them feel good. Their faith gives them a warm feeling inside that matters more to them than reality itself. And that's rather pathetic when you think about it. Of course, we can't forget that this applies to more than just the religious. It is an epidemic across the whole of the human species. There are people who believe in alien abductions and lake monsters and giant-footed creatures in the woods. There are people who are convinced that the Illuminati runs the world, that there are massive conspiracies that seek to keep the common man ignorant and under the thumb of the powerful, and that if only they can get the word out, they can be heroes and save the world. These people have something seriously wrong with their mental processes, but no more so than the religious. They are uncomfortable acknowledging their real place in the cosmos. They desperately want to be important, even when they're not. And they want to become a legend, and they are, but only in their own minds. The religious have the same issues. They want to be best friends with the creator of the universe, such that they can tell the rest of the world what their God wants, which curiously enough, is always the exact same thing that they themselves want, and that everyone will listen to them. There is no significant difference between the pathology of the conspiracy theorists and the pathology of the religious believers. Neither side can prove their claims, but both have absolute and unshakable faith that what they believe just has to be true. So what do we, as skeptics and critical thinkers, do about these irrational beliefs? Well, there probably isn't a lot that we can do, at least not directly. Our evil atheist brain control device is yet to be perfected, so all we can do is keep asking questions and pointing out fallacies to anyone and everyone that makes them. Don't allow an absurd claim to go unchallenged. Ask a lot of questions. Demand answers. Point out where those answers are ridiculous and explain why they're ridiculous. A long time ago, I came up with a 30-second debate. It's a debate tactic that will end virtually all debates in 30 seconds. 
Do not accept unsupported arguments for anything. Directly challenge everything. How do you know that? Where's your evidence for that? How did you verify that idea? Let them sling insults at you, as they're almost certain to do. Just point out their emotionally fallacious tactics and continue asking questions. Most will just walk away. A few will probably take a swing at you. It's just evidence that they have nothing of substance to say. Make sure you point this out to the audience that your opponent is failing every call for rational discourse and getting upset at their own intellectual bankruptcy. And don't soft pedal it either. Call a spade a spade and a failure a failure. It is what it is, no matter how it makes the other party feel. Of course, by the same token, you have to measure up to the same standards. If you can't back up your own claims with the same kind of evidence that you expect to get in return, you're doing something wrong, and you should probably rethink your own positions. Take the high road and demand the discourse come up to your level. Never let the discussion sink to the wishful thinking and blind faith of the believer. If they can't prove their claims, point it out, prove your own, and wait for them to take the next step. Man has evolved the ability to be rational and to think about things critically, but a lot of people are more comfortable relying on primitive emotion for everything. This is unfortunate, but we need to change the standards and criticize those who refuse to meet those standards. We no longer live in the Middle Ages. We're better than that today. Modern science has given us the tools we need to discover a great deal about the real world. There's no reason to put up with those who refuse to use those tools and continue to cling to primitive superstition and mythology. We're better than that. We need to demand better than that of all. Thanks for listening. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions or constructive comments, please leave them below. As always, like, subscribe, and share far and wide. And if you have any other questions that you'd like me to address or stories that you'd like me to respond to, you can always send them to me at my email address. I'd love to see more people engaging in discussions in the comments. I know it's hard to do on YouTube, but I've done it a couple of times, and at least for a while, it's been rewarding. The more people who are willing to get out there and hold an interesting dialogue, the better it will be. So until next time, take care.